Good evening, I'm Peter Mansbridge. With continuing CBC coverage of the Gulf War, a war Canada is now truly a part of. Those of you who have just joined us, let us recap for you what has happened today. A series of attacks that have been simply horrifying. We all know that Mr. Layton uh, has been fighting a battle, a very difficult battle with cancer, but unfortunately, we've learned that uh, he passed away. It is obviously an unusual situation to unfold on Parliament Hill. There have been incidents in the past over the years, but nothing like this, an exchange of gunfire. That voice is one that I think if I heard it waver, I'd know there was something really wrong. Informing and reassuring at the same time. He's the voice of, it's going to be okay, and it's not so much telling us what's going on as teaching and helping us be part of what's going on. Journalism is about telling us uh, what we know and also what we don't know in a way that doesn't um, make people panic, but it helps them understand the context of what's happening. That voice and, and that presence, it is so distinct. Uh, that amazing mix of grace and gravity. He, he can be so important uh, with such a humble touch. Authority, intellect, principle, and integrity, and that has been his hallmark every day of his career. Peter has one emotion, steady. The voice, the look, the broad shoulders. Once the microphone takes the voice, it does something. When everything else is in chaos, Peter has been a voice of calm on the air. Good evening again, I'm Peter Mansbridge. They were deliberate, they were deadly. The most devastating terror attacks in the history of the United States. He has this amazing capacity, I don't know, maybe it's just his pipes, but you know, when you're connected and you hear him in your ear and he says, okay, we've got this, take a deep breath. We're gonna get through this together, just stay cool. It actually, I have felt myself just calm down. It's a relationship that's built over time and a trust that develops and that's where the voice comes from. There's a confidence in that voice. I think when people hear that voice, they think they know him. They certainly trust him. There's a reassurance that regardless of what we've gone through, everything's gonna be okay. That's Peter Mansbridge's voice. And so we were listening to Peter's voice, essentially on international television, and it was quite something. Cold opening, voiceover, and I'll go right through into the opening. Here we go. Full coverage of an historic day here in South Africa as the world says goodbye to Nelson Mandela. And when Knowlton announced that he was stepping aside to let Peter come in and take his place, that's when I said, this guy must be something. On Monday, my friend and colleague Peter Mansbridge takes over the anchor chair here. That was a magnanimous gesture, but it said something about Peter. And for me, Peter has always lived up to that faith that Knowlton had. Peter Mansbridge sitting in the chair, separating fact from fiction, reality from rumor. To that point where he was the speaker, he was the voice, he was our Walter Cronkite. I saw him as a highly competitive uh, individual, very much in the um, get it first but get it right school of journalism. You know, a great example is when that lunatic shot up the Hall of Honor in Ottawa. You know, he received emails from all over the world, from his peers all over the world, saying, you know, Peter, you set the platinum standard for how we should do, we should do our jobs. And until somebody uh, blows the all clear on this, um, we will continue to uh, stay on top of it and watch as the events unfold. He's good from laborer to prime minister. Uh, he has an instinctive uh, sense of reading an occasion. But when you're actually on the air, and Mansbridge is across from you, I cannot think of anyone who treats you better. You know, a lot of people admire him across the country, and I continue to marvel at how easy he makes it look. It's so smooth and, and calm and resolute and Canadian and everything we want from a news anchor. He's it. His sources are so deep in the political world that it's hard actually at times to stay ahead of him and provide analysis that he doesn't already have himself. Year after year, decade after decade, from and one century to the next, he became an iconic figure of, of Canadian journalism. journalism. 
Being against apartheid and there's being against apartheid. Mm -hmm. Rebuilding Sidney Crosby's brain. You haven't played a full season because of injuries. If you're going to have a national broadcaster, then you want that national broadcaster to understand the people, to understand what motivates us. CBC has an impressive legacy of quality journalism, and Peter did his job with calm and purpose to be sure that under him, that legacy would be protected. And the journalist instinct that Peter has are, I think, at one with what CBC News stands for. He was someone who really thought about news, not just about the content of the news, but about the value of the news, about the ethics of the news. Peter knew all about the Canadian diplomats were harboring American diplomats to hide them from the mobs in Tehran. When they were safely uh, taken out of the country, other organizations reported it. We did not, despite the anger of our bosses that we had never told them. But Peter never regretted the decision, and he opted on the side of safety. And it was a story, a scoop that would have uh, shaken the world that he decided not to cover. There's a tendency sometimes for everyone who gets on camera anywhere to put themselves in the way of the message. And Peter did not do that. He conducted his, his career, he conducted his interviews in a way that tried to uh, get at the essence of uh, what the story was to be about. He gets it. There's not one story uh, that he hasn't covered about Indigenous people and all the crisis that we're dealing with as Indigenous people, and he gets it. He's got a really strong humanitarian instinct. He's got a big heart. He's got an open mind, right, despite the fact that he's had to cover an awful lot of very sad and, and sometimes heartbreaking things. This is Juneau Beach. There is Canadian blood in those sands. Peter was a real pro, you know. He will, will always be well brief. He will, was not asking stupid questions. Peter actually poisoned my life for most of the Meech Lake era because I would cover it, go home, and then i tune into the national and hear that voice say, CBC has learned. And then I think, oh, no, tomorrow's going to be a long day. A historic world event, the funeral of Pope John Paul. He was somehow plucked out of the crowds and ushered to a special privileged viewing position where he was shown on live Vatican television and he never really quite understood why he had been so chosen until he saw the tape of the broadcast and heard the voiceover. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the president of Poland. He did look a lot like the president of Poland. A lot of people don't know he was one of the best television reporters in Canada in history. And uh, the Americans knew that. He passed up a certain stardom in, uh, in New York and in America uh, because of his uh, special love for Canada and his affection for the public broadcaster. Peter Mansbridge is the quintessential Canadian. You watch somebody on TV all the time and you see and you're trying to project what the persona is. All of a sudden, no, he's one of us. One of the guys kibitzing around wanting to know what's going on and this and that. So it, uh, it really humanizes uh, everything that we do. Peter is, you know, an, an average Canadian. He, he loves to be able to spend time and to be able to just be real. He's just the real deal. You have been a voice for all of us as we listen to the reflection of who we are. And he has that special quality to be able to uh, sort of reach out to people of all ages and have that trust that goes with it. I once worked uh, with an anchor who the show went on at uh, 11 o'clock and he came in at 10.30, read over the script, <laughs> went into the studio, read it off the auto cue, and was back out again by quarters of 12. Uh, that's not Peter Mansbridge. You know, I'm not sure if people saw last year him walking around Vimy Ridge with a Google backpack to do a virtual reality piece uh, for CBC News that he embraced and wanted to do. Getting the pictures that would bring the battlefield home to Canadians and trying to communicate what it must have been like for those young soldiers who walked these same paths in April of 1917. You wouldn't think somebody at this stage of his career uh, would, would embrace and want to push an experiment, but he does. To meet him personally for the first time, he's got a huge head. I don't mean uh, ego-wise, I mean physically. He's got a very large head, as do I. A lot of people in television do. I remember thinking, wow, I thought my head was big. It's a little known fact that Peter's voice is actually high and squeaky, and he puts it on like a radio voice. 
<laughs> but when he relaxed, oh man, it's like uh, Mickey Mouse. You think you can make that? <laughs> okay. First try. First try. Oh. Ah! <laughs> yeah! Easy. He's very funny. He's got an awesome sense of humor. And if you look real closely, you'll see that little twinkle in his eye. Please welcome, perhaps, my favorite guest, me, Peter Mansbridge. Why do we touch our chin so much? Well, it keeps the head up. And that's the national, oh, ah, shit. Two ball guys, real men. That's right. Love that sound. Let's hear more of that Olympic theme. I can't wait to see the next chapter of your life unfold. It's going to be awesome. Peter is like, you know, I don't know what people do at 10 o'clock at night. What do people do at 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> He's done 10 p.m. so long for so many years, had to be disciplined and there for us so many years. He should do whatever he wants to do. Peter should go on Twitter and, and tweet with abandon, reckless abandon. I think he should do what every other Canadian does every night at 10. He should watch the national. Maybe he should start a comedy show, like a late night comedy show, because we don't really have that. He could do like the Daily Show thing. No, I'm not Strombo. I know I look like him. The biggest thing he's going to find is he's going to be doing more things now than he did when he was working. My kids loved him in Zootopia, uh, so I think there's a full-time job for him as a voice actor. And I thought broadcasting the news on the national was a challenge. Former Mayor Dawn Bellwether is behind bars today. Her predecessor, Leodore Lionheart, denies any knowledge of her plot. I don't do work with co-anchors. Peter, for a guy my age, I've been getting my news from you my whole life. It's going to be weird without you. So I'd simply like to say thanks to Peter. Thanks on behalf of a grateful audience. Thank you, Peter. You will be deeply missed. I still hope that when I turn on the TV, you're going to be there. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Peter, thank you. Thank you for all of these years. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Mansbridge. Merci beaucoup, Peter, and good luck. Thanks, Peter. You'll be missed. Thank you, Peter. Well, thanks, Peter. You've been a great friend. Thank you, Peter. You'll be missed. Thank you, Peter. I don't know about thank you, but I will certainly will wish you good luck. Thank you, Peter. Hey, I just want to say I'm sorry for bumping you during the playoffs. Well, not really. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.